Caitlin Clark got me to a TV last night. I'd never watched the WNBA draft, and I watched the first 45 minutes of the WNBA draft. You know you have pull. You have it. When you get me to a television set, and I know what's going to happen. I always said Titanic's a great movie. I watched it three times. I knew the boat sank. I knew the ending. I knew what happened. You read the books. It still got me to a movie theater. That's power. You never know where the stars come from. The highest compliment you can pay anybody in this frenetic, distracted world, entertainment, iPhones, TikTok everywhere. The greatest compliment you can get somebody, me, last night, to sit down in front of a TV and watch something I don't normally watch when I knew the outcome. I knew how it was going to end. Caitlin Clark goes number one. And I recognized many of the top 10, 12 picks. I'm not going to recognize many of the top 12 NBA draft picks. The NBA draft has become like the Oscars. A lot of stuff that won't get me to a theater. I'll take your word for it. Those foreign films are great. I don't know exactly why Caitlin Clark is this popular. I mean, she's great. There's so many great athletes. She's non-controversial. She plays women's college basketball. But I think a lot of it is in a world where all these sports leagues are trying to siphon more money out of you. I mean, you watch the Yankees. They're on six different streaming services. This channel, that channel, this channel. Where's baseball? Where's the MLS? March Madness, Iowa Hawkeyes, little flashy, likable player, has really good range. She gives me what I know. I've said this about the NFL. It's the only league. I say, when do you watch the NFL? You not only give me the day Sunday, but you give me the times you watch it. Mission Impossible, Tom Cruise. They're on their eighth Mission Impossible. Taylor Swift, Caitlin Clark, March Madness numbers, NFL numbers up. All mostly domestic. All things we've watched for years. The crazier the world gets, the more global it gets. And I think the NBA's got more great players than ever. Globalization. Caitlin Clark is what you know. Iowa, little underdog, March Madness, broadcast television mostly, or cable. Um, it's just fascinating to watch. The things that get me to a TV in a theater, I know it's getting bigger out there and the streaming services, and I, I got to have this plus and that plus and that streaming and I find myself seeking simple seeking dependable seeking traditional and I'm watching last night and I'm like oh I, I know that player I know that player I know that program I watched that program comfort food that was like comfort television last night I'm busy I'm distracted I don't want to pay for another cable channel I don't want to pay for another streaming service March Madness ratings up NFL ratings up. I mean, I'm trying to explain the unexplainable. Well, she's a really good player. Her ratings were bigger than everything except the NFL. <laughs> Iowa women's basketball. Dependable, traditional, non-confrontational, fun, easy to consume, likable, and I've seen it before, the Big Ten and March Madness. Got me to a television set last night. So I always try to find out, and there's no, you're always looking for a common thread in the NFL. How do you know what quarterback's going to hit? And so there was a story this morning that J.J. McCarthy, the Michigan quarterback, that scouts many agree that he is not a first-round pick, but yet he may go in the top 10. I told you the first time I watched him, I thought, Hammenegger, he's okay. It's hard bots, Michigan, the O-line, the run game, the defense. I don't get it. Um, and so there's a lot of different opinions right now on him. And so we're always trying to figure out, and so are NFL teams, what's the common thread? How do we predict to a higher level who's going to make it, who's not going to? So I went to the last 10 drafts, and there are 12, we can argue, but 12 quarterback hits in the last 10 drafts. C.J. Stroud, Mahomes, Josh Allen, Herbert, Burrow, Lamar, Jalen, Jordan Love, Kyler Murray, Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott, Jared Goff. Franchise guys. Franchise guys. The school clearly doesn't matter because Josh Allen went to Wyoming. Jared Goff went to Cal. Jordan Love went to Utah State. 
I mean, Lamar Jackson went to Louisville. That's an okay program. So the school doesn't matter. Size is mostly overrated. Kyler Murray, small. Josh Allen's a giant. You'd rather be bigger than smaller, but Lamar Jackson came in really spindly, and Josh Allen didn't. And Patrick Mahomes, the greatest maybe ever, is average size, 6'2". The franchise history can matter, but it doesn't matter that much. Trevor Lawrence got the Jags to the playoffs. Kyler Murray did the same to Arizona in a division with Pete Carroll, Kyle Shanahan, and Sean McVay. And Joe Burrow got the Bengals to a Super Bowl. So what over the last 10 drafts of the 12 quarterback hits? Now, hit can be Mahomes. It can be Goff. A hit can be Josh Allen. It can be Kyler. But they're hits. They're franchise guys. The only criteria that I have found that I can depend on, it's one of two things that gives you a higher probability to be a franchise guy, a high-end franchise guy. Number one, you either in college elevated an average or a weaker roster. Lamar Jackson, Goff, Dak, Josh Allen, Mahomes, Jordan Love. Justin Herbert had Panay Sewell at left tackle, but no other great NFL player on offense. So seven, eight of the guys elevated at the college level. They took a college roster that was okay, and they elevated it to a Rose Bowl, a Big Bowl. Or the second criteria that becomes an NFL hit in the last decade, that you're on a stack team, but you're insane productive. Jalen Hurts at Oklahoma, 52 total touchdowns his last year. Joe Burrow's last year at LSU, 65 touchdowns. Kyler Murray, Oklahoma, 5,300 yards, 54 touchdowns. So you're either one of two. You elevate an average college roster or a weak one, or on a stacked roster, you're Superman. J.J. McCarthy's neither. He had average stats. On a stacked roster, he's neither. That's my issue. If you go to the last decade, we get about 1.3 quarterbacks per draft that hit. We have six, four for sure, maybe six first-round quarterbacks. You got to either show me in college that you took a Wyoming, a Texas Tech, a Mississippi State, an Oregon roster, and took it to a different level, a Rose Bowl, a big game. You took it to a different level. Or you're on one of these traditionally stacked rosters in Oklahoma, Texas, Alabama, Georgia, Michigan, but you put up crazy numbers. You jump through the television set. But J.J. McCarthy, not the first one and not the second one. He had 24, 25 total touchdowns last year on a team that blew out a lot of people. He had one 300-yard game. So when I push back on J.J. McCarthy, I've been trying to figure out what is it. I mean, he's 6'3", he's tall enough. He won a bunch of games, but he didn't elevate a team that had average players, and he didn't put up rip-roaring, crazy, productive numbers like all the other guys that are hits in the NFL. So his Michigan experience is not an NFL experience where you will go to a crappy team in the top 10 and have to elevate an average roster. Or maybe you go to a stacked roster on a great team in the NFL, but that's very rare. Most of those great teams already have great quarterbacks. So there's my answer. There's my answer on J.J. McCarthy. Hi, everybody. It's me, Uncle Colin. Subscribe here to get the latest from the herd, including exclusive behind-the-scenes videos and more, wherever you may be, however you may be watching. Thanks again for making us part of your day.